Hello, Amplify You family. Michelle Abraham here again. I am super excited to bring you another amazing podcast. And I have a special guest today. She is one of our awesome clients. She's got a really cool podcast and a great story behind it. I just, I'm excited for you guys to get to know her. Her name is Susan Montanero and she is the host of Dreams and Detours podcast. So welcome, Susan. Thank you for coming and being with us. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm so happy to be here with you today. You're welcome. And Susan, I just like would love to start at the beginning of the idea of your show because you've had some really cool guests on your show. Um, You know, you're all about talking about creating a life that you love, getting out of your head and getting back, you know, to a more fulfilling life. And, you know, I think that some of the stories that have come out of your show are so interesting. What inspired you to start your show? Yeah. So, you know, being a huge fan of podcasts for years and years, really led me to combine both my passion for storytelling with this amazing audio platform that I felt was being deeper and deeper and more widely uh, adopted and, and attractive to others seeking all sorts of long and short form storytelling. And so when I was first beginning to think of, oh, that would be so cool. I'd love to have my own podcast. It was really Everything that you see now in my podcast, it was really, those are the thoughts that I had. So I've always been a firm believer that we find ourselves in each other's stories. And since that was a part of my growth cycle as an adult, you know, sort of finding language, putting language to things by listening to others talk about their own life experiences, I thought, well, how brilliant to dedicate a show simply to sharing your experiences in life, good or bad, you know, um, up or down, whatever that might look like, because no doubt others are having or have had similar experiences. And I find that when we tell stories, we affirm for others their own sanity or their own, you know, experience in and of itself. So I thought, oh, you know, that would be the best intersection to be able to bring this to the general public. So it took a little while, <laughs> you know, like I think, you know, many podcasters, there's so much trepidation either in their own insecurities of speaking, like literally speaking down to um, organizing all of the nuts and bolts. But then, you know, the great news was, you know, I met you. And so you were so kind to not only work with me, but really give me a lot of confidence to take my message forward. So it's been, it's been a blast ever since. That's awesome. Now you're coming up to almost a year of doing podcasting already. And yeah. how, how long exactly has it been? So yeah, so it, when I first finally launched, it was super exciting because I think it was sort of like letting the air out, right? And, and knowing that I was finally taking these steps. I mean, it's also been a learning experience. I get better with my technical skills each week. Um, I become more conscious of the types of stories that I'm telling and the purpose behind how I'm seeking out guests and how I'm uh, even putting my own solo shows together. So it's really cool because I've watched my own evolution Mm -hmm. from the beginning and just my own uh, knowledge and growth. It's been pretty phenomenal. For someone who's like thinking about starting a podcast right now, what would you say was been like the biggest hurdles that you had to overcome to get your show like going? And then since it's been going, what do you see that's the biggest growth areas for you? Yeah. So first and foremost, just do it. I mean, I can tell you that the majority of people that I've spoken to, it's really just been fear that's held them back. And then, of course, all of the technical parts like, oh, my gosh, I don't have this or, oh, my gosh, what should I record on? What should I use? You know, what should I use a mic and this and that? Those are things that are so easy to learn about quickly, what you need or what you don't need. Um, And you need very little. So that's the beauty of it. You really don't need to go high tech, especially in the beginning, because you'll grow into whatever your, your needs will be. After getting started, like anything else in life, the novice stages, the beginning stages are always filled with anxiety, um, filled with all sorts of concerns that it's not that they're not rational, but they really end up being less important over time. And so I think getting started and just designing into whatever you want, that's going to be your best route forward. Just do it. Yeah, I love that advice. Just do it. And you know what I appreciated what you did, Susan, is like you really learned like all the pieces and all the moving things that went into kind of getting a podcast going. 
And so you were, you were quite educated in like what you needed to do to get the podcast going. And then we were able to then like help you go through that. And then when you launched, you were also knowing how it all works. So I think that kind of makes it a little bit easier. Although some people are like, I don't want to learn all that stuff. But do you, do you, are you glad that you learned that part? So you kind of understand the whole po- process? Well, yeah, because I am a person who likes to be in control of my content and I wanted to decide how things would unfold. And so for me, I really needed to be able to learn certain aspects. Um, Like I really love doing the majority of my edits, timing and the way a person shares a story the quiet moments are actually as critical as the ones where there's, you know, volume and there's actual words and some speaking going on that I take away from film. I am a huge fan of film. I'm a huge fan of watching stories unfold silly or serious. And I took that away from my film watching experience, the quiet films where there weren't many words spoken made such a huge impact. And so I felt like i use that and I lifted that and I use it in my own storytelling or that of others, the guests that are on this show. So the control of learning the technical aspects mm-hmm. of my podcast had very a lot to do with the way in which I felt that rhythm needed to show up. Yeah. yeah I love that. You don't just like publish like oh, whatever the person said. Like I feel like you add a lot of creativity into what you're doing too. And so when you have a guest come on and you have a sort of expectation of what kind of stories you want them to share and then they don't necessarily go that way. How how do you deal with that? And you kind of like lead them in a different way or what's your strategy? Yeah, so my process includes having a conversation in advance with them. I mean, often, especially lately, I'm being introduced to people by friends and by free, you know, previous guests who say, oh, I really think that you should speak to this person. I think they would have a story to share. And so the first step is let's them. And I dig around and I poke around. And what we try to uncover is which part of your life and which story are you most comfortable telling? It has to be for them first and foremost. And then I need to know, has, is this a story you've shared out in the world already? Does everybody know this? And the reason I ask that is because I want it to feel fresh for your listeners, not just for my listeners, because we need to be playing to both audiences to make this relevant and worthwhile, right? People don't have a lot of time. So if they're going to tune in for 30 minutes or 25 minutes, I wanted them to feel like they're learning something that they haven't been able to Google or see through your channels. And then, yeah, if it's something that's, sensitive in nature. I push a little bit in the, in the preview conversation to ensure that that's still a place you want to go. And if I were to ask you questions about this, tell me how far I can go. So I really do ask permission of all those things once I gauge the story that we're going to then share and record. Only a couple of times I've noticed that when we've gotten to the record day, that it could be just nerves. Like I don't, you know, there's no blame here. It could just be really just nerves, but sometimes people have a hard time navigating or wherever we start off. Sometimes we navigate into the story in such a different way that not everything we talked about initially is revealed. Right. Um, And I have had only maybe one or two times where I've struggled to get them into the zone that I felt we had agreed would be most relevant for listeners or really resonate. Um, so yeah, so it's tricky, um, for a lot of reasons, but I, I think my biggest thing is I want people to feel comfortable and I want them to not feel that they've said something that they then don't want the world to know, you know, I'm pretty sensitive about that. Yeah. Which I'm sure your audience really, your, 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 your interviewees really appreciate that. One thing I wanted to unpack for our listeners for just a second here, you said that, um, you want to play to both audiences. So listeners, I just wanted to just bring this back out again. Cause I think this was a really great nugget that we kind of skip over sometimes and forget. So one of the things I've noticed in the podcasting space, like if you see some famous person on, on a, on a podcast, you're like, Oh, you know, as a podcast host, yes, I got that big name on my show. But as a listener, I'm kind of like, yeah, I've heard that person's story. I don't really need to go and and listen to that episode because right. I already know their story. And right. so I love what you were saying. Like, has this been shared publicly already? Is this something that's already 
out there because you know that's what happens when you have so many episodes with like a famous person or like a person that's been on a lot of shows is that you get the same story all the time so um that is really great where did you come up with that or what what made you kind of like zero in on like really making sure that you're appealing to their own audience so they share it but also like your audience Sure. So, I mean, first and foremost, for me as a content consumer, um, overexposure becomes sort of boring. I worked in media for over 24 years and I understood the relevance of unique and, you know, unique content, things that were, you know, we had the angle or we had a piece and a portion of the story that no one else had. I understand the importance of being first to market with a breaking story or just with um, pieces and sections that are not diluted in the marketplace. And so some of those lessons certainly came up for me. But again, this goes back to where we are now in 2020. People don't have a lot of time, no matter, even now in our COVID days, people still don't have a lot of time. We're being, you know, our, our time is spent in a million different ways. And I want someone to listen because there's something interesting and relevant to take away, not another you know, recording of, yes, I know this story. Yes, I've heard this person. It just felt like it was a, a time waste. And uh, on either side, I didn't want any of the audience members to feel like they were just sort of rolling their eyes and thinking, I know this. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's not something that um, as a podcast host, I ever really think about like their audience. Um, yeah. so I thought that was really interesting that you pick up on that. So having a background in media for so long, were there any other, any other things that you've kind of incorporated that you learned and you learned in the media industry um, that you really wanted to bring to your podcast and um, using your podcast? Well, I would say that um, from a promotional standpoint, I tried to use some of those tricks. I was never the head of marketing. I'm more on the sales and sponsorship and content side of things. And so, you know, I wouldn't try to, to trade that and suggest that I knew otherwise. But there are many things that I'm aware of. And so I do in my marketing try to utilize that I think more so I've learned a lot from other podcast hosts, you know, some of the more popular podcast hosts that are thoughtful, that include and, and verbalize a person's, you know, website where they could be found on social media, the importance of being able to say that out loud on the audio track, and also including those things in show notes. I think it's really important to point out information in a variety of ways and to ensure that you're doing your guest justice. Um, even when I'm doing a solo show, if there's something really critical to include beyond my own website, because it's not just for the purpose of, oh, come see me. You know, even yesterday, I launched a show and I would say that it was really important for the content to include professionals in the space of the, of the subject matter. You know, it was all about trauma. So I, I don't want to talk and just speak to the way in which I might be able to as a coach help people, but it was more, look, there are multiple places that you can go. And so I think ensuring that we are doing our due diligence to include really important information like that. So I learn from others and, uh, and try to incorporate it. That's great. I love, um, I love that you can incorporate all sorts of different uh, opinions too, right? So uh, I think having those, you know, the, like you said, like when it's something that's of, you know, kind of a medical thing that maybe you're not educated in and it's great to bring in those experts and have those conversations and oh wow then we just open the door for more education for our listeners and, and for yeah ourselves. I mean I think that's the best thing about being a podcast host right like how much information do I learn every time I interview well, someone I just that's know. just it and here's the thing in my mind you know regardless of the size of my show today I'm always thinking two things one I really don't know the the um I don't actually know who is listening, right? The specific person on the other end. And nor do I know where the show is going to go and who I might in the future potentially be able to reach. And so if I keep those folks in mind, that it could be anyone today and it could be anyone down the line, I just want to make sure that I am doing my best to deliver to as many people as possible and be diverse in the message so that I am bringing something of a gift to as many people as possible and that that feels, you know, relevant for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, remembering that podcasting is like evergreen too. And I think that sometimes we forget that, that you know, <laughs> like 10 years from now, right? So having those sure. conversations that are relevant, I think is great. 
Um, sure. So Susan, tell us a little bit about what you do for work now and like outside of your podcast. Yeah, so I had a media career for a really long time and I wouldn't say that I don't dabble in that space because I do often um, grab a consulting gig and still do some work there um, where it makes sense and that's actually a lot of fun for me. Um, I focus myself in the VR, the virtual reality space and so that's been a blast. But aside from that, I decided to take my uh, cheerleading and coaching skills to the next level. I've been a certified holistic health counselor and wellness counselor for over 14 years. And so I continue to do that work full time. And I also included my life coaching skills and kind of created a company about 18 months ago to do that work full time now. Um, I also just signed up to return to university to get my master's degree in social work. So in a year's time from now, I'll add psychotherapists to that uh, lineup as well. So there's a lot going on, but I think essentially the work that I'm doing is really geared toward helping people, you know, find their own joy and find their own life path that makes sense for them. I'm looking to do work specifically in trauma because we have so much of that. And so anything that I can do to be a part of the healing process and helping people get through grieving stages um, will be, you know, the mark that I want to leave essentially. I love what you're doing because you are taking multi different things that you are passionate about and educated in and kind of like combining them into like your own unique way of like being a coach or your own unique way of doing things, which is really fascinating. And, you know, I think, you know, at the end purpose is helping people live a more fulfilling life and living the life that they want. And that's clearly what you're doing in your life. So now your podcast is called dreams and detours. Did you have a few detours in your life along the way to, to achieving this? I sure have. (laughs) I think that's why I am doing the work I'm doing and why the show is out there now. I think it's because my own experience has been just that. I have had plenty of detours in my life and I've, you know, been the person who, you know, got the knock but didn't hear it, got the knock but didn't hear it and didn't hear anything until I got knocked down. And so whether it was in my personal relationships or it was in my work pathway uh, or even in my friendships, right? It was, um, I was consistently finding myself not where I belonged necessarily or not in the right direction. And so whether that was getting laid off or having relationships fail me, I had to learn from that. And I had to figure out, you know, the why is like, why is this happening? And what should I do? And why is that happening? <laughs> what can I do? And, and so I think, listening to other people also share their experiences started to make me feel less alone. Uh, It gave me ideas of places and pathways to pursue and to consider. Um, And after doing a lot of my own soul searching and a lot of my own work to figure out, well, Hey, what's really good for me and where, where do my passions lie and, and where do my, my best skills exist in order to fulfill myself, but also be of service. And so it took a long time of, hitting different detours and then redreaming and coming up with new dreams. But um, yeah, no, I can finally say that the work that I'm doing mimics and and sort of reveals my own journey. And as I continue to come up with different ideas and different practices for others, they are because I myself have experienced them or tried them. I don't only talk to the things that have worked for me. I kind of like to share everything because I know that we are all so different and we will find different things that work for us. And so, yeah, I try to share all of that. Yeah, that's awesome. And is there, what's your like take on detours in a life? Like what, like why do we have these detours? Like what, like what makes them so like crazy in our lives? <laughs> you know, like heartache, I think that they're essential. I think that we learn the most when we are faced with challenging times. Um, I think in the moment we don't feel that way. We just feel the pain of something, the loss of something. Um, And that's unfortunate in the moment. But every moment is a learning moment. And I think it's about being able to say, okay, this has occurred and I'm hurt or I'm pained by it. and, And there's some tremendous suffering that might actually also take place. But why did this happen and what can it teach me and how do I turn myself 
around toward light, toward life, and toward all of the things that I would like to have and that are good. Um, and really, I think it's being able to see the contrast, right, in life. And once you can do that, you can start to have some measurement to what feels right and what doesn't feel right. So yeah, it's kind of like a compass that guides you, right? Totally. And totally. Uh, you know, I think sometimes those those detours have the silver lining in them. It's like, yes. hey, well, I was meant to take that detour, and you know, the right. road was closed for a reason. <laughs> and how often have you heard someone say, "Oh my gosh, if it hadn't been for this unpleasant, unfortunate moment in time, if everything, the bottom hadn't fallen out, I would have never met. I would have never had. It would never." Have been. And so, yeah, we have to actually totally. believe other people when they say that they are grateful for some of those down times and detours because they wouldn't have had otherwise. You totally. Know? I mean, I met my husband when I got injured, someone jumped on me and I, I bulged two discs in my back and there came my husband to rescue me. So, you know, like even, even in that story, there's, that's it. Even, even though 10 years, 12 years later, my back still hurts, but, you know, <laughs> at least the, I got a husband out of it. So, there you go. You know, there you go. Yeah, it's I funny, love that. It's funny how that works, isn't it? So Susan, do you have any advice for people that are looking at starting a podcast right now? Maybe they're just like, not really sure like where, what, like, you know, there's this, they could talk about this or they could talk about that. Uh, how do you like kind of narrow that down? How do you figure out what is your story? And you know, this is something I struggled with a lot when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do a podcast on. Um, so oh, any advice for people out there thinking about starting one? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think it's always wise to start with where you are. I mean, what's going on in your life? What do you find yourself reading about the most and wanting to talk about the most? What do you feel that you know a bit about or you're curious about? I think it has to be really natural to who you are. You know, if you're a parent and parenting is consuming you and you feel like you really are diving into that, then maybe something in the vein of would make sense. And that's who you spend time with. And maybe that's who you can cater to, you know, and being an entrepreneur, maybe depending on the industry that you're part of, you know, that's your passion point. That's what you're consuming the most about. And I think it just should be natural. It should be what you want to talk about. And if it has nothing to do with work and you're just like a person who watches movies all day or, or is a gamer, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It just means something to you. And I think you find your tribe and you find your audience when you're really being honest and you're being open and you're speaking from the heart. I think people tend to prefer listening and paying attention to those people who are coming from an honest and earnest place. So whatever that's about, just do it, just get started, just have the conversations and, uh, and know that you don't really need to have too many other tricks up your sleeves initially, you just need to dive in. Yeah. I love that because, you know, uh, pod fade is a real thing. <laughs> and yeah. if, you, if you don't pick that right subject right from the beginning. Yeah. It's easy to moment, peter right? out. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. And then and I clearly like you have not lost steam. It's been over a year since you've been doing your podcast. You're really like loving doing it. You're something you're enjoying. So clearly that was like, a, a, like that was a home run hit for you for like content wise. But to add to that, like you just said, you know, fading out is really easy. And so that's another reason to pick the right content and topic. But I'll, I'll add to that, that even when you do pick the right content, you can still have that experience, which is why it's that much more important to pick things you're passionate about and you want to talk about. Because there are weeks when I'm just like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, you know, I, it's not that I run out of ideas, but you run out of steam. And so you need to sort of dig down and you're only going to be willing to do that when it really is something that means a lot to you and matters. So yeah, Absolutely. that much more uh, reinforcement to the pick something that matters category. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And if I can add to that too, I think, you know, having something that matters to you is super important, but then I think remembering that, you know, you, whatever you're saying could change the life of someone. And, you know, instead of focusing on like the thousands of downloads, if you focus on that one person that you That's have right. in a room, like they're listening, could change your life. I don't know how many countless of stories I've heard about, you know, someone that was about to, you know, commit suicide or someone was about to, you know, um, do something that, you know, was going to change their life and they listen to a show and change the course of their life. And they that's right. Keep that in mind as a host too. I think that keeps us going, um, gives us the momentum and gives us the steam to keep, 
keep going. And um, one of the things that I think helps too, and I don't know how you find your guests, but like going out and kind of expanding your circles, <laughs> expanding your circles constantly to find new people and talking to new people to get those fresh new stories and get those things. I think is an important thing for us as hosts to do. Cause if we get stuck in our same, 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 then we're not going to find yeah. other, other people. No, is that what you've experienced? Yeah, same is not good. I'm, I employ all of the people in my immediate tribe as well as my extended, and they all know how you know curious I am to always meet new people and to hear new stories and to keep it diverse. You know, I really want to expand outside of just what someone's you know immediate thoughts and expectations might be. And I take so much care with my guests and with the content and the conversations, and I'm super conscious of of the listeners. I mean, I do this for the listeners first and foremost. Mm -hmm. My feeling is it's okay if this never becomes a monetized revenue revenue stream for me. That was never my intention. I mean, I love when people say nice things or share it. I love hearing, oh, I listened to this episode and it every single time absolutely delights me to hear that. And I get emotional. I'm like, you did? Like, really? Because it, it means a lot to me because I really do take into consideration that if even one person finds themselves and affirms their own experience to the point where maybe it's a load off or maybe they feel less alone, mm -hmm. that I've done my job. That, that's, that's the most important piece to this. So yeah, and expanding out beyond just the immediate grouping of, of what would be more obvious. Oh gosh, so important. So yeah, important. I love that. Like as being, you're super vulnerable as a host um, when you're recording your episodes. And I love that because then that allows people to relate better and also feel like you said, not alone. Like they've also sharing your story helps people heal too, helps people, um, you know, feel not so alone. And I love that. I sure. think that's, that's something that, you know, we need more of out there. So I'm so glad that that's something that you do in your, in your show. I think it's super, super powerful. And I think it, what makes like a show really unique and really um, something that people want to come back and listen to over and over. Right. Exactly. Awesome. Susan, do you have anywhere for us to, well, let's first of all, find where your show is on dreamsanddetours.com, right? And it's the, the website is dreamsdetours.com and I can be found at dreamsdetours on Instagram and on Facebook Perfect. or I can be contacted susan at dreamsdetours.com and I will answer every email because that's what I do. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for answering all my questions. <laughs> it's been great to hear how your show's been going and I wish you all the success coming up in the next year with your show. And I'm just so excited for you of where this is going. So thanks, Susan, for spending some time with us today. And we look forward thanks, to having Michelle. you back again. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And Amplify You Addicts, I will see you again next week with another great episode. Take care.